In this video, I will show you an easy workflow to create a dissolving tile pattern. This technique is highly flexible and can be adapted for various design scales. And you'll often see this in landscape, facade and interior design. So let's dive right in. First, we need to bring our boundary curve into Grasshopper. Next, I want to create a boundary rectangle around this curve using the bounding box component. Since this bounding box is flat, we can easily convert it into a surface by connecting it to a surface container. Now let's finalize this surface using the staggered quads component from the lunchbox plugin. The U and V inputs control the number of divisions in both directions. At this point, I want to add an option to rotate the panels within our boundary curve. Instead of using the default orientation plane for the bounding box, we'll create an XY plane, positioning it at the center of the curve's area. Then we'll rotate this plane, set the desired angle, make sure degrees is checked, and connect the rotated plane to the bounding box orientation plane input. If you adjust this slider, you will see how the panels rotate dynamically. Now let's trim the panels so that only those inside the boundary curve remain. For this, we could use the native region intersection component, but a much faster method is using the intersection component from the Angon plugin. The first input is the boundary curve. Since we need to find intersection between the boundary and each individual panel, we need to graph the list of panels so each one is processed separately before connecting them to the intersection component. However, if we zoom in, we notice an issue. The boundary curve is automatically converted into a point line during the intersection process, which may give unexpected result. To fix this, we'll manually convert it into a polyline using the curve to point line component. By defining the angle tolerance, and the maximum edge length, we can ensure a smooth result. Now I will take the cut curves output and clean up any empty branches using the clean component. Next, we need to convert each polyline into a mesh. For that, we'll use the from polylines component from the Angon plugin. Since these meshes are currently sitting on the world XY plane, we need to lift them to match the height of our boundary curve. To do this, we'll extract the Z coordinate of the boundary's center and use it to move the meshes along the Z axis and flatten the list. The core idea here is to use attractors to categorize panels into different groups based on their proximity to the nearest attractor. I've already prepared curves that will act as attractors. Now let's bring them into Grasshopper using a curve container. Next, we'll find the center of each mesh using Angon centers and pull these points toward the closest attractor curve. From the pull component, we'll use the distance output to sort the panels based on their proximity to the attractors. Now for the interesting part, grouping panels based on their distance to the nearest attractor. To achieve this, we first need to define a domain using the minimum and the maximum distances. For that, we'll use bounds. This domain will be divided into equal segments with each segment representing a different panel group. Now we need to determine which of these segments contains each distance value. We can do that using the find domain component. The index output tells us which domain each distance belongs to. But here's the challenge. Right now we have a single list of values. How do we structure them so that panels belonging to the same group are in the same branch? The solution is simple. We use the member index component, which help us find the index of a specific item within a list. In our case, the members to search for will be the values from 0 to 8. Since our index output is already sorted from 0 to 8, we just need to remove duplicate items using delete consecutive and extract the final list of indices. Now that our indices are sorted into different branches, we can create panel groups using the list item component. Next, let's join the meshes from each group and connect them to the custom preview component. For coloring, we'll use a gradient. I will leave the L0 and L1 values as default, 0 and 1. 
the key input here is a value that determines the color along the gradient range. This value should be evenly spaced from 0 to 1, that's why I use range, and it should be 1 less than the number of domain divisions. We connect this to the input of the gradient component. Since our gradient colors should match the data structure of our meshes, we'll make sure they're placed in a separate branches accordingly. All right, now let's take this further. I want to add more control over the gradient transitions. To do this, uh, we'll remap our list of sorter distances to a domain from 0 to 1. Then I'll modify these values using the graph mapper. P0 works well for this case. From these adjusted values, we'll generate a new bounds domain and continue the steps as before. Now let's introduce another effect, a more randomized transition between color groups, creating a dissolving pattern. For that, we'll take the list of indices from the find domain output and shuffle them using jitter component. Plug the indices into the list to shuffle. The jitter input defines the shuffle intensity from 0 to 1, where 1 means complete shuffling. The seed input controls the random order. And now I'm going to tweak all the parameters so you can see how we can generate different variations. If you would like to explore this topic even further, I highly recommend checking our mini course Landscape Design with Grasshopper. In this one, we'll first create a fluid-like pattern with multiple colors using only Grasshopper. Then we'll tessellate the entire area and map tile colors based on this multicolor pattern. After that, I will share a powerful technique we developed for creating dissolving patterns that transition from one color tiling to another. And trust me, this was a real challenge even for me after more than 12 years of using Grasshopper. Along the way, we will also take advantage of new Rhino 8 features for layer management and advanced baking in Grasshopper. And on top of that, we'll render the final design in V-Ray. If that sounds like something you would be interested in, join our How to Rhino Premium community. You'll get access to one workshop and one mini course every month, plus all extended YouTube tutorials, project files and even opportunity to earn money with our affiliate program. Check the link in the description and we'll see you inside.